We now learn how to find the values of both cosine and sine for angles that lead us to being in the second quadrant with the unit circle. So that corresponds to all of the points on the unit circle that I'm currently highlighting. Now we're going to learn this method with some examples, so let's go right ahead and get started. As a first example, we're asked, without a calculator, to find the exact value of cosine of 150 and sine of 150. Well, first of all, the angle 150, starting from this point here with coordinates 1, 0, which is always our starting point, we move around the unit circle through an angle of 150 degrees, and that would approximately lead us to here on the unit circle. So let me just mark that point. That would be this point here, and I'll call that point P. I'll also add the radius, OP, like so, and so we are saying that this angle corresponds to 150 degrees. By definition, P has coordinates cosine of 150 and sine of 150. And so those are the two values that we're trying to find. And cosine of 150 corresponds to the horizontal coordinate of point P, and sine of 150 corresponds to the vertical coordinate of point P. To find their values, the first thing we do is make a note of the angle separating point P from 180 degrees. So that would be this angle that I'm currently highlighting now. Since we went through 150 degrees to get to P, it doesn't take us long to realize that there are 30 degrees separating P from 180. Now that we've made a note of that, we reflect point P across this vertical axis. And in doing so, we define a new point which we'll call Q. So I'll just add that here in blue, and I'll add the radius OQ, like so. Now, since Q is the mirror image of P across the vertical axis, we can see that the angle that point Q corresponds to will be the same as the angle we initially measured here, that was 30 degrees. So I can go ahead and add that 30 degrees right here. In other words, point Q corresponds to 30 degrees. And therefore, by definition, point Q has coordinates cosine of 30 and sine of 30. We now compare the coordinates of points P and Q. Looking at these, we can see right away that they both have the same vertical coordinate. And since the vertical coordinate of P is sine of 150, and the vertical coordinate of Q is sine of 30, that immediately allows us to state that sine of 150 equals to sine of 30. And sine of 30 has a well-known value. Indeed, it's one of the values that we have to know. And it's equal to 1 over 2. If we now focus on the horizontal coordinates of points P and Q, we know that point P has horizontal coordinate cosine of 150, and by definition point Q has horizontal coordinate cosine of 30. But since these points P and Q are the mirror images of each other across the vertical axis, their horizontal coordinates will also be the mirror images of each other. In other words, they'll have opposite values. And that allows us to state the following. Cosine of 150 equals to negative cosine of 30 where cosine of 150 is the horizontal coordinate of point P, and cosine of 30 is the horizontal coordinate of point Q. And cosine of 30 has a well-known value. Indeed, cosine of 30 equals to the square root of 3 over 2. So negative cosine of 30 equals to negative the square root of 3 over 2. And we're done. We've just found both cosine of 150 and sine of 150 by reflecting this point P across the vertical axis. Now the good news is this method and the steps that we've just followed will always work so long as we're in the second quadrant. And in fact, let's go ahead and work through a couple more examples. Again, we're asked without a calculator to find the exact value of both cosine of 120 and sine of 120. Well, starting from the point 1, 0 again, the point on the unit circle corresponding to an angle of 120 degrees is found by moving anti-clockwise along the unit circle until we make an angle of 120 degrees. 
and that would be approximately here on the unit circle. So I'll just add that point approximately here, and I'll call that point P. As always, I'll draw the radius OP like so, and so this angle corresponds to 120 degrees. Now by definition, point P has coordinates equal to cosine of 120 and sine of 120. And now, just as we did previously, we make a note of the angle separating P from 180 degrees. Well, since we went through 120 degrees to get to P, there should be 60 degrees left. And in fact, I'll add that to the unit circle right here. That's 60 degrees. We now reflect point P across the vertical axis to define a new point, which we'll call Q, which I'm adding right now in blue. I draw the radius OQ, like so. And now, since P and Q are the mirror images across the vertical axis, the angle that point Q corresponds to will be the same as the angle we just measured previously. That was 60 degrees. So we can add that here. That's 60 degrees. And by definition, point Q has coordinates cosine of 60 and sine of 60. Now that that's done, we compare the coordinates of both point P and point Q. Looking at these two points, it's quite clear that point P and point Q have the same vertical coordinate. But we saw that the vertical coordinate of point P was sine of 120 degrees. And we've just seen that the vertical coordinate of point Q is sine of 60. Those two values of sine must therefore be equal. And we can state the following. Sine of 120 equals to sine of 60. And sine of 60 has a well-known value. Indeed, sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. We now compare the horizontal coordinates of these two points, P and Q. And we know that point P has horizontal coordinate cosine of 120. And by definition, Q has horizontal coordinate equal to cosine of 60. And since P and Q are the mirror images of each other across the vertical axis, their horizontal coordinates will also be the mirror images of each other. In other words, they'll have opposite values. And that allows us to state the following. Cosine of 120 equals to negative cosine of 60. And cosine of 60 has a well-known value. Indeed, cosine of 60 is equal to 1 over 2. So negative cosine of 60 equals to negative 1 over 2. And we're done. We've just found both the value of sine of 120 and cosine of 120. Let's look at one last example. Once more, we're asked without a calculator to find the exact value of cosine of negative 225 and sine of negative 225. Well, starting from the point with coordinates 1, 0, the angle negative 225 is found by moving clockwise around the unit circle until we've gone through an angle of 225 degrees. And that would be approximately here. So I'll just add that point, and I'll call it P. As always, I add the radius OP, like so. And so the angle we're dealing with here is this angle here measured clockwise, negative 225 degrees. Now, by definition, P has coordinates cosine of negative 225 and sine of negative 225. Just as we did previously, we make a note of the angle separating point P from 180 degrees. And it doesn't take us too long to see that this angle here is 45 degrees. We now reflect point P across the vertical axis to define a new point on the unit circle, which we call Q. And I just add the radius OQ, like so. And now, since Q and P are the reflections of each other across the vertical axis, the angle point Q corresponds to will equal to the angle that was separating P from 180 degrees. So that would be 45, which I can add to the unit circle right now.
this angle is 45 degrees. Now, by definition, Q has coordinates cosine of 45 and sine of 45. We now compare the coordinates of the two points P and Q. Looking at these two points, it's quite clear that they have the same vertical coordinate. And since the vertical coordinate of point P is sine of negative 225, and the vertical coordinate of point Q is sine of 45, we can state that sine of negative 225 equals to sine of 45. And sine of 45 has a well-known value. It's equal to the square root of 2 over 2. We now compare the horizontal coordinates of point P and Q. Point P has horizontal coordinate equal to cosine of negative 225. Point Q, on the other hand, has horizontal coordinate equal to cosine of 45. And since points P and Q are the mirror images of each other across the vertical axis, their horizontal coordinates will also be the mirror images of each other. In other words, they will have opposite values. And that allows us to state that cosine of negative 225 equals to negative cosine of 45. And cosine of 45 has a well-known value. Indeed, it's equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So negative cosine of 45 will equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. And we're done. We have now found both cosine of negative 225 and sine of negative 225. And there we have it. And so that's how we can find values of both cosine and sine of angles that fall in the second quadrant of the grid. And that's it for this tutorial. There we go, everyone. I really hope that helped. And if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel because that really does help us. I'll see you soon.